finally guys it's day one of the process of getting this tank running i'm super stoked Today, I will actually be making sure the rock structure is sound. I'm gonna be putting a, a JB weld, water weld on it, and using some super glue in other places. I'll probably use the super glue first to make sure I, I, it stays together for me while I put the water weld on. And then I will be taking the sand, washing the sand, adding the sand to the tank, and then I'll be adding RODI water and just running an, uh, with just RODI water. So for day two, I'll be adding the salt. And uh, so let's get into this, guys. I'm super freaking stoked. Okay, so let's take some of these out. All right, guys, so all I'm gonna be doing is taking the super glue and trying to hit some of the spots as they are touching each other just to help out, so. Next piece of this will be the water weld. So all you do is just take it out. Take this piece off here. Take the plastic off. This stuff is extremely messy to play with. I should be probably wearing gloves, but I'm gonna be using just my bare hands just because I'm lazy. So I got a thing of water. I am going to actually dip my fingers in this. To keep my hands from sticking. So as you see, I'd actually put most of my epoxy on, I mean my water weld on the back of the structure because I don't want it to show in the front of the tank on the display. So I have points here, here, here on this bottom rock to the second rock. Then I have two water welds here and here for the second rock to the third. And then over here I have two spots uh, right here and then here. So these should hold solid. Now I did not plan on putting this on here with water weld. Because if I, if I wanted to, I could ever move these rock structures and stuff around. Uh, I can because this won't be welded to the other two sides. So that's going to be it for me on epoxying. Let's move on to the next stage. So it looks like the rock structure fits pretty good. This is where I want the tree. So I'm just going to super glue this tree right into place. Like so. And uh, call it good with the super glue. So this all should stick really well. I am happy with it, guys. All right, so this is gonna be my second stage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bucket, put it into my sink, take the sand, pour it in, and then put this over top and have the water run in. Now, this is the first time I've done this, so let's see if this works right. Uh, last time I did this, it was very janky. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully this one works out better. All right, so as I ran it, uh, the screen wasn't needed. I don't see any sand coming up, but you can see how just how white and milky this is. We don't, I don't want this in my tank, so I want to rinse it out the best I can. And uh, so this is the way I'm doing it. Okay, so it's still running. It's probably about 45 minutes elapsed. Uh, I have started a lot, as you can see with this here. It still can get mucky a little bit, um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to call it. I think it's... It's gonna do a lot better than what I did with my 40 gallon. It took a long, long, long time for my 40 gallon to clear up. Probably about a good month or two. Uh, but with all this cleaning I've done for the last 45 minutes, it should greatly reduce that cloudiness for a long time. All right guys, now that I have my sand washed enough for my taste, uh, I'm gonna use this scoop here and I'm gonna add in sand bit by bit. Wait, 
Are you serious right now? No. I, I may do dumb things sometimes, but I'm not this stupid, okay? I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I got uh, a more sufficient scoop, um, and I'm going to put sand in the tank, so let's do this. All right, cool guys. I think I'm happy with the the depth of the actual sand bed here. So I'm going to proceed and put it in my rockscape, and then we could put in the RODI water and uh, put a conditioner in it and make sure. Uh, I'm a little skeptic of like chlorine and stuff, so I'll just put in some conditioner to make sure there's no chlorine in it, and we'll move from there. So let's do this. All right, guys, so one of the things I hate is having to scrape behind rock work. It gets really annoying, so I'm going to grab my little, you know, cleaner here and make sure I get behind all the rock work easily. Uh, that way I know while the, the actual tank itself is running, it'll be easy to work with, so... All right, so I actually buried in the, the rock work a little bit because I think the actual twig itself or stick, whatever you want to call it, was actually almost at the very tip of the tank, and I don't want that to be a thing. So I buried it a little bit, and I buried the other side to even it out, and I think we're good, guys. So let's add some water. My next trick is uh, to put the RODI into my 29-gallon. I don't feel like carrying buckets, so what do I do? I get extra hosing and I put a little connector on it and I feed it directly into the 29 gallon. Now the whole thing is I hope I don't fall asleep with this. So let's get this sucker turned on. And there we have it. Beautiful. All right, so today is day two, and unfortunately, I did not get the tank uh, completely filled, uh, but it's not a huge deal. I don't mind it running into day two. I kind of had a hunch it would. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to fill this up to the top to where I want the levels to be, and then I will add a heater in it, get it to proper temperatures, and then I'm gonna add my salt in and get the, uh, the filter rolling and moving, and uh, that should move us into day three. So let's jump into this and finish this. All right guys, so I got the tank completely full now. I have done a couple things while it was hyperlapsing. I actually added in the heater uh, and I have turned the filter on itself. So we have some circulation and uh, I'm super stoked about this. It looks so fresh and so clean. Um, if only we could always keep our tanks looking so fresh and clean like this. But sometimes, you know, I like seeing that coralline algae and I like seeing some of the age in the tank. So 
But the next thing I'm going to do is I actually have a, a maxi jet that I use to um, circulate and mix my salt for changing water. Let's get to putting this maxi jet together in a, in a way that is going to more suit this tank. All right, guys. So I had to scratch that because it was way too loud. This tank is in my bedroom, and being as in a powerhead form, it was just rattling way too much. So what I ended up doing was going back to the original setting that I had, and it actually is a lot quieter, and I can utilize it uh, until I get my current USA uh, powerheads. This will do just fine, and it is circulating water like I want it to. As you see, the tank is a bit cloudy now because it is circulating water. So now I can add the salt and uh, we can pretty much call it a day for day two after I add this salt. So I've added in my salt and I didn't put in the recommended amount. I actually went short on it to make sure that I can still add salt if I have to in the morning. I'd rather have to add salt than add water or remove some water then add some fresh water it's more of a pain to do that so I went short on the salt uh, it does look like there's a lot of salt in the tank at the moment you see some on the substrate when I get up in the morning I will churn the sand a little bit to make sure there's nothing trapped but all the salt should dissolve by the time I put fish in it and uh, we should have a good salt tank uh, by the time I put fish in it so I think we're in good shape guys Okay, so today is day three of getting my 29 gallon reef tank run up and running. Uh, day one, I pretty much just glued the rock together, put the sand in, and put in some RODI water. And I got up about halfway. Day two, I finished the RODI water. I put in salt, I put in the heater, and I put the filter in and got it running, and put in this uh, power head to kind of get some movement and make sure nothing is stale. And uh, today, for day three, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make sure the salinity is uh, nice and level. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is put in, I have two bio balls that are in my 40 gallon breeder that I will be putting in this to jump start it. That way we don't have to wait for a cycle. And the last thing is add the livestock. So let's jump into day three. 1.024. Now this allows some buffer. For the salinity to go up uh, because I don't have an auto top off at the moment I'm gonna have to do it daily myself so until my auto top off comes in I want to run it just a hair low just so I have that buffer for when water does evaporate out of the, this tank now the other thing I want to test for is my pH I want to see what this pH is at make sure it is the proper levels to add in livestock And it looks like we're about good. It's really close to eight, so this shouldn't be a problem for the fish. I think this is about where my 40 gallon sits, so let's call it there. So now it's time for the livestock. What I've been really excited about, it just they just came in today. It is two gladi gladiator clownfish. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull these babies out and get to it. Number two incoming. So there we have it guys. We have two gladiator clownfish bonded pair already. So this should be an easy transition for them to go into the 29. Man, they are small. They're very pretty though. I love them. It was a good purchase. So let's get these guys warmed up. I'm sure this water is extremely cold as I had an ice pack and it was 56 today. So I don't think it was the smartest move for them to put an ice pack in it. So, well, all right, reefers and aspiring reefers and just YouTubers in general, this is the moment I've been waiting for on my 29 gallon. I think the two clownfish are in good shape to go into the tank. 
They have been warmed up. They are into the appropriate temperature now and I did drip acclimate them over some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to net them out and put them in the tank. I know guys, the big net. Uh, get you to scoot in there for me. Here we go. Yep. In we go. And we got one in. One more. Come here, buddy. Been freaking out the whole time. Come on. Come on. It's okay. Come on. Don't freak out. Next. Get in there. There we go. There we have it, guys. We have a live tank here as they explore their new home yeah that's exciting well guys so i ended up uh just kind of i had extra current usa uh, orbit marine led lights and i actually had the the controllers and stuff for it you see it on the floor here and i was Kind of curious how it would look on here so i turned it on these are actually all whites even though it looks blue on the screen and i think i'm actually going to keep it on there because it doesn't really bleed a lot of light it does bleed a little bit uh, but these lights are going to be 10 times better than these lid lights over here just because the way they turn on and off and i don't have to really do anything i could schedule it have different lighting schedules for it that way it's easier on the clowns and they don't get stressed out too much and it just looks better so I might actually end up keeping these on here for a while uh, like I said if who knows I might end up just leaving this LED light on there I don't know well I'll have to see in the long run see how this works out maybe I'll put like I can maybe actually put a bracket on it as well who knows I don't, I don't know I don't know this, this is just I wanted to record this because this was really early and what I was thinking about uh, for the past week if I could utilize these lights or not so I have it hooked up I already have and you can see there's a little bit of a mess down here but it comes with a, an actual bar here so I can put in my let's see let's turn this light on here I could put in my wave pump already into this, so it should all work out just right if I want it to. So I'm, I think I'm going to do this. I think the the current USA is the right motion for me, and uh, everything's going to come out looking pretty good. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, and we'll see what happens with it on the future. Well, here it is, guys. It's the 29 gallon reef tank. I guess technically it's not a reef tank yet because I don't have any coral on it, but there will be here shortly. Uh, but this is where I wanted to be for the end of this video and for you those of you who have stuck around I really appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing. I didn't expect this video to be this long um, So that being said you guys, if you guys are enjoying the channel and you're not subscribed yet Please hit that subscribe button so you can see future videos coming up If you have a question or a comment about what I do in this video Please leave a comment. I'm sure I'm, I don't, not 100% on what I do in this video. Some of you guys probably won't like what I do. Some of you guys probably will. So I like to hear feedback. And if you have liked the video, please leave that like. And um, that being said, I'm um, we'll gonna go ahead and end this video on a really short montage of what this tape looks like uh, at the end of this video. So uh, thanks for checking me out, guys. Peace. All right, guys, so I'm Jess Moses. Feel free to click on my stupid face. Give me that subscribe. And if you want to see what I'm doing when I'm not on YouTube, feel free to check out my Instagram. So I'm always posting on there. And if you want to see any other videos, if this is your first video you've seen of mine, feel free to click on any of these two that you see on the end screen. So take care, guys, and refund.